I begin this video with an experience I had with a little girl some years ago. She is the daughter of a friend of mine with whom I shared an office. It was always fun to chat with her. She asked me why I had cut my hair so low, close to bald, and she seemed surprised when I told her I like it like that. I was equally surprised at her expressed dismay. With the frank honesty of a child, she told me bluntly, it does not look good. <laughs> Still surprised, I told her my friends say it looks good. She told me, well, I'm telling you, it does not look good. Somehow, I thought I would have been a little bit more convincing when I told her my wife, whom she respects, also said it looked good. The child said to me, Mr. Gilling, let me tell you a story. And she proceeded to tell me a famous tale that, interestingly, I never heard before that day. It was the story of a king who was walking around naked, showing off his invisible suit that everyone was afraid to tell him he was not wearing, until a child, yes, a child again, this time a little boy, told the king the truth that he was naked. <laughs> she told me how the king rewarded the boy for being the one to tell him the naked truth, pun intended. Little Janelle told me that day, that I should reward her for being the one to tell me the truth about my low haircut. Dear Watchtower members, many of us are like the people in that story. We refrain from telling you the truth because A. We do not want to offend you and chase you away. B. We do not want to appear disrespectful or disdainful. And C. Many of us view it as in poor taste to be frank with you which is what this really is. But there comes a time to avoid being politically correct. There comes a time to attempt to prevent you from walking around naked. If you act wisely, you are a wise people. What if your actions are silly? I'd love to be politically correct and call you a wise people, but not at the risk of becoming a dishonest person. Who but a silly people could be sold this statement. It is good to remember that Jehovah has always worked through one organization only. In our day, the faithful and discreet slave is dispensing spiritual food at the proper time. Note that this slave was to be found doing so when the master arrived. Really, who today realizes that the master has already arrived? And who is busy with the work indicated? Only those associated with Jehovah's organization of Christian witnesses. Who but a silly people could be convinced in a world of sin, suffering and death that Jesus had already arrived and that a bunch of fools telling them such nonsense was dispensing to them spiritual food at the proper time. 25 years later, in the July 15, 2013 Watchtower magazine came the question, When does Jesus arrive or come? And of course, the explanation. In the past, we have stated in our publications that these last four references apply to Jesus arriving or coming in 1918. Only a silly people could be told that the arrival or coming of Jesus took place in 1918 after his second coming in 1914. The resurrecting of even the first ones of the human dead, must wait till after the presence, or parousia, of Jesus Christ begins. This official presence begins with his second coming, according to the sign that Jesus foretold, and also according to certain Bible time measurements, his invisible presence, or parousia, began in autumn of 1914 CE. But wait, the organization is about to clarify it all for you. Finally, we examined why Jesus' arrival to appoint the faithful slave over all his belongings did not occur in 1919, but will take place during the Great Tribulation. Only a silly people could be told in the same article that in the past we stated that Jesus arrived in 1918 but he did not arrive in 1919. He will arrive in the future. And I know that some silly persons will tell me that I am being disingenuous. 
because I know the organization taught that Jesus arrived in 1918 but did the appointment in 1919. So the 1919 sentence was related to the appointment and not the arrival. But I know a little bit about English language and the rules of sentence structure. Read the sentence again. The subject there is the arrival, not the appointment. The sentence could be summarized. Finally, we examined why Jesus' arrival did not occur in 1919, but will take place during the Great Tribulation. But that is not the end of the nonsense. After clarifying that the arrival of Jesus did not take place in 1919, or as previously taught, in 1918, guess what? On the anniversary of the announcement that the arrival is future, July 2014. Ever since that marked year of 1914, the sign of Christ's presence as Earth's new King has become clear for all to see. Do you get it? Are you paying attention? The official invisible presence of Jesus began with his second coming in 1914. His arrival, that was thought to be in 1918, did not happen in 1919, but is now set for the future. But we are still living in the time of his presence, which began with his second coming in 1914. Given all of that, who else but a silly people could buy into the following 2014 statements? Jesus foresaw this troubled time, and he assured his followers that they would receive the encouragement they needed to endure to the end. In order to strengthen them, he appointed a faithful slave to provide spiritual food at the proper time. As these difficult last days rapidly draw to a close, we can be confident that Jehovah will continue to provide spiritual food at the proper time. Dear Watchtower members, look at the title of that article. Are you receiving food at the proper time? Those two statements would move all but a silly people to examine the food that has been served from 1914 to now. Watchtower members do not like people digging up their past, say up to 1975. I don't have to go back to 1874, 1888, 1914, 1915, 1918, 1919, 1925, 1941, 1942, or 1975. One only needs to put on his thinking cap and look at this 1988 statement. It is enough for crying out loud. Not only was a slave teaching a now admitted error that Jesus had already arrived, it did so while boasting to be the only organization God was using and was boasting at that time that it was dispensing spiritual food at the proper time. The timely spiritual food we receive is proof that Jesus, the head of the congregation, is keeping his promise to feed us. Really now? And for Watchtower members to be sold a statement like that is proof that they are a silly people. Really sad. It is vital that we recognize the faithful slave. Our spiritual health and our relationship with God depend on this channel. Dear Watchtower members, there comes a time for frank, honest discourse. There comes a time to be very careful in what is said, but there also comes a time for calling a spade a spade. There comes a time to shake a people up with the truth. Some may suggest that I retract calling you a silly people. I take no pleasure whatsoever in doing it. Some may suggest that I apologize. But rather than apologize, rather than retract, I close with a question. How much more silly can you get? 
the king rewarded the little boy for telling him the naked truth. Do you know what I want you to do? Reward yourselves by opening your eyes, waking up, and stop playing the fool. Stop allowing the Watchtower organization to play you all as fools. <laughs>